This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. Wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-alim. Alhamdulillah, as we're discussing the prayer of those who are drawn close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, we have talked about the opening takbir, the saying Allah, Allahu Akbar, that Allah is absolutely great, and what that entails and what that should mean to the hearts of the believer. Then we discuss the opening dua of the Prophet وسلم, which is made up of two verses of the Quran, which 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 remind our hearts. Right? And if a person reflects on these meanings in the prayer, the heart begins to understand its purpose in life and its own reality of its existence. And then after that, we enter into the blessed surah of the Qur'an, the surah al-Fatiha, which the Prophet وسلم, uh, mentioned as being the Ummul Qur'an, the, 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 the source uh, of the Qur'an as being the, the, is the summary of all of the, the profound meanings of the Qur'an. And it is by this surah that we enter Right, that we address Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we enter into the presence and the and the second person address of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But before we read this blessed surah, what we do is we, we protect ourselves from the source of all deception and we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's majesty from the plots and the tribulations that come from this this being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created as being the one who, uh, who is the source of deception, which is the shaitan. So we say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ rajim. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed uh, devil, shaitan. And by that, what we intend is that we are intending to seek refuge not only from that specific creation of Allah, the shaitan himself, right, but also from all other motives. <clears throat> that we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all other ulterior motives. Right? Because, right, as we mentioned before, that the prayer is in essentially the vehicle by which we reach ultimate tawheed, ultimate oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not just oneness in worship, but oneness in pursuit, oneness in goal, oneness in purpose of life, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Right, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرجيم, That we're not only seek refu- seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan himself right, and his deceptions, but also from all other ulterior motives besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And the, uh, the, the inclinations or the proclivities of our base, base human nature, which makes which is made up of both our uh, our physical desires and appetites, but also uh, our ego, right? The, the the inclinations of our ego, this desire for status, this desire for praise, this desire for fame amongst people, right? So we're seeking refuge from all of that because all of that is other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of that is the the ways, by are the different paths by which one can be deceived from this beautiful the quality of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect of our being. Right? And then we say, Bismillah, right? Bismillah in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So what we're rea- what we are reminding ourselves here is that the reality of the situation is that every single thing in creation and existence right, is right, it is a uh, in existence by his name subhanahu wa ta'ala right it is encompassed by his knowledge subhanahu wa ta'ala right so if you see anything that exists right that anything that is alive in creation then know it is qa'im it is established by the name of allah al right if you right, if you see anyone who has provision in this world then know that it is established by the name of allah al-raziq right the provider 
If you see anyone who is without provision, then know that it is established by the name of Allah al Mani, right? The one who withholds in all of every situation and every occurrence and every circumstance that is in the world, right? You will find that it is established and it is like it is the way it is by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So when we say Bismillah, the name of Allah, Allah Right, which is the greatest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names, encompasses all of the meanings of all of the 99 names and all of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we're saying in the name of Allah, we are essentially we're using the name of Allah and all of the meanings that that entails, meaning that all of the meanings of all of his attributes and all of the meanings of all of his names are encompassed in that one name. And we are... Right, we are almost essential. We are essentially seeking the blessing through that name, right? And we are, right, we are attaching or what we're going to do, right? Whether it be Bismillah in the beginning of Fatiha or Bismillah before we do any action, as is the Sunnah of the Prophet, especially any praiseworthy action, that we are attaching that the doing of that action to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's divinity and, and his his complete control over all existence. Right, and that everything in existence is by his wisdom and by his doing, and subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so we say, Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So we ascribe, right, we don't just say Bismillah, but we added the two, ver the two qualities of the most compassionate and most merciful. Right, so by saying that, we're saying, right, in the name of Allah, right, the one by, by, right, in whose name all existence is established, Right, the most merciful, the, com the most compassionate, most merciful. Right, when saying com most compassionate, most merciful, we are witnessing and perceiving Allah's vast mercy over all of existence. Right, so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is essentially Allah's Rahman, the compassionate, by giving existence. Right, bil ijad. Right, His giving us existence. Right, that's Rahman. Right, and Rahim is another emphatic form of this this idea of mercy. Right, that Allah is Rahim bil imdad by His sustenance of us. So it's not that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala just created us, right? But Allah created us, right? And He sustained us in existence. That every single moment Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is sustaining us. Wa kullan numidu ha'udai wa ha'udai min min atai Rabbi. Right? That and everyone is being sustained by right, those and these by the the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And this sustenance is not only in the outward, it is not only in our food and our drink and our clothing and our shelter and so forth, or in our community, but it is also in inward sustenance as well. Right? Because Allah sustains us in our spiritually. Allah sustains us with community. Allah sustains us with knowledge. Allah sustains us with this, with sincerity and these and yearnings for Him, Subhanahu wa Taala. Right. So we are praising. Right. So because of all of these realities, right, that we have entered into the prayer with by saying Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Right. Just those three qual names of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Allah Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, encompasses all of what we are to be grateful for. So what do we say next? Right, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, all praise is due to Allah. Right, and when we say all praise is due to Allah, right, it means in its entirety, right, in everything that is big and everything that is partner in, in the in the uh, in the big blessings, the obvious blessings, and even in the small blessings that right, everything, the credits of every single blessing that we experience in this world. Whether we know about it or not, the credit of it goes 100% to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Whatever blessing it is that you have, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this idea of ascribing all of the credits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the reality of the situation. Right? And a person can be very easily deceived by ascribing any of the cre credit of Allah's blessings to themselves. And this is what's called the urjib, right? Self-conceit that right, my prayer, my recitation of Quran, that I stood up for tahajjud, that I am fasting. This I, 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 right? This eliminates this tawheed, 
this oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we say Alhamdulillah, we are again focusing our praise and our gratitude on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this beautiful conveyance of oneness, Tawheed, direct monotheism, absolute pure oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is not that we uh, we worship Allah alone, right? that our oneness is only in worship, but our oneness is also uh, is not only in worship, but it is also in right, an absolute gratitude to Allah and uh, in our ascribing that every single blessing that we have in, the, in our lives and in our uh, surroundings and in our communities and everything, every blessing that exists, whether we know about it or not, all of it goes to Allah. Oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And by means of this alhamdulillah, then we are essentially bringing to heart, right, that we, that we are, we are essentially, that we are the recipients of the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And that's, that we can possibly be a means that we can even be a means by which the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reach others in creation, right? Whether it be ijad in bringing in existence. So the parents are a means of bringing existence, whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who actually, right, is the one who brings the child into existence, right? The parents are the means though, right? But also we can be means in this subsistence, right? in this in this nourishment and the sustaining from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the creation, we can be a means of that, right? So it is Allah's doing, right? That all of the things and all of the blessings in the world are ascribed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but to the extent that we can be a means, right? For those blessings to reach people, then we are essentially, right? Attaching ourselves to the divine attributes, right? That by sustaining others, by feeding the poor, by helping, right? The, the needy, by providing others that we are attaching ourselves as means of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's giving of provision to the creation. And what an honor it will it is to be the means by which the beautiful qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifest themselves in the in the world. Right. So right, so by this, right, we can understand the the, the value of what it means to be a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to be an emissary to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be a means by which the divine qualities manifest in the world. Right? And this is, the, the, this is the, the secret behind our existence. Right? And this is where our existence is raised, right? and our level is raised, and our rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is raised, right? is that Allah chooses us to be a means right? of his divine qualities manifesting in the world. But in the end, alhamdulillah, all of the credits goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Hadith Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the a'malukum uhsiha lakum thumma wafikum iyaha. That it is only your deeds that I, that I count for you and I will give you in full reward, right, in full recompense for them. So whoever finds of their, good de of their deeds good, then let them Praise Allah, meaning let them ascribe all of the praise and all of the credit for Allah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever finds other than that, then let them not blame anyone except for themselves. Right? Right, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our is the one who gives us existence and he's the one who gives us subsistence, who takes care of us thereafter. It is not that Allah created us and then just left us. Right, to, 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 to fend for ourselves. Right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah khalaqa sab'a samawatin wa min al-ardi wa mithlahunna yatanazzul al-amru baynahunna li ta'lamu anna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir wa anna Allah qad ahata bi kulli shayin ilma in regards to Allah's giving of existence or bringing into existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah is the one who created the seven heavens and of the earth similar to that, right, his decree de descends between the between them, so that you can know right, why is all, why did Allah created the heavens and earth? Why is Allah's decree right, manifest in the heavens and earth? Why? So that you can know that Allah subhanahu wa taala is indeed the all powerful and, and all able, 
and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is has encompassed everything in absolute knowledge. Right? So these the, the divine qualities manifesting in the world, right, in this bringing of existence, the exist right, Allah's bringing the heavens into existence. Allah's bringing the earth into existence. Allah's bringing humans into existence, creation, animals, plants, everything to existence. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine command um, being the vehicle by which everything is the way it is right is all for one for the reason that so we can know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can see those things we can see creation we can see all of the circumstances that are in the world and we can deduce by that that Allah is all able to is able to do all things and that Allah has ultimate knowledge of everything so that's the ijad right that's right, that is one of the two one of the two main blessings right that are are manifested in these qualities ar rahman ar rahim and that we are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for when we say alhamdulillah the second of those two qualities this imdad the sustenance the sustaining that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us Right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مِنْهُ That Allah has subjugated for you, meaning you creation, meaning human beings, right? All that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth, all of it for you, right, from Him. Right? That everything that is in creation right, is created for us to use as a means of drawing near to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah has subjugated them for our sustenance, and for, right, both outwardly and inwardly, right? That we, right, there's animals in this world, we eat from them, right? There's animals in this world, we use them to ride and to carry our, and to carry things. There are plants in this world, we use them for our food and for medicines, right? There are all of, and, and for dyes and for, right, and, and all these different things that we use plants for, right? All of the creation is subjugated for us. Why? Right, so that we, can reflect on those realities as the verse ends in the Fidanik la ayat in Yun indeed and that are signs of the greatness of Allah for the people who reflect. So we reflect on the creation, we use the creation, right? And that is a sustenance for us, both in our physical makeup, our bodies, right, and in our spiritual makeup. So the the, the creation being subjugated to us right, is for our right, for us to use so that our so that we can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to use in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for us to use as a point of reflection to draw our hearts to more knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of that is the sustenance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكُلَّنْ نُمِدُّ هَأُولَاءِ وَهَأُولَاءِ مِنْ عَطَاءِ رَبِّكْ وَمَا كَانَ عَطَاءُ رَبِّكَ مَحْضُورًا In all of them, those and these, Allah sustains with the gifts from, his, from your Lord. Right, as Allah SWT mentions in the Quran, right, because all of existence right, exists only by the light of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's existence, right. and all and everything in existence reminds us right, of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's greatness, as the poet said. Uh, Indeed, in everything, there are signs that prove to us, that indicate to us that He is the One, Subhanahu wa Taala. And then we say, "Rabbil Alamin, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, and the Lord of the Worlds." Right, and this this idea of the worlds, right, the world, the alam, is the the instrumental tool by which we get ilm, knowledge. It is the divine theater upon which the divine. It is the, the the theater upon which the divine attributes are manifest. So by looking at this theater of the divine manif the, the manifestation of the divine qualities, we come to have ilm, knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Who is the Lord of these uh, of the worlds? So we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala right, to real to make us realized in these great meanings of this surah, this blessed surah, Surah Al-Fatiha, and we have only touched on the first few verses, and even that's only to a small extent. 
and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the realities of these verses right, deep in our hearts and to allow us to understand their meanings, right, both, uh, both in the wording, but also in the meanings behind those words. And that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make these meanings uh, a means of trans, trans, of, of transforming our hearts to a state of true slavehood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while we pray and then even outside of the prayer. Wa sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org forward slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.